Hi ho folks and welcome back to the adventures of Turwinkle the Gnome Mage. Well hi Turwinkle. Hello. Are you all set for tonight? Affirmative. Well great because tonight we are going to be interviewing Himanshu, the leader of Warsong Battalion on Emerald Dream and so we're gonna have to slip on our sluffy disguise and go and talk with him. And we've been really looking forward to this interview for quite a long time because Himanshu is quite a polarizing figure over on Emerald Dream either love him or hate him and we're gonna find out from the man himself what he's all about and so with that let us hearth on over to Emerald Dream and put on our sluffy disguise and find Himanshu of the Warsong Battalion alrighty folks well I we made it safe and sound to the Southern Barons uh, with the help of uh, Florius I, I I assume that's how we say his name, uh, who flew me, flew me over on his Sandrake from Orgrimmar, here to the Southern Barons. And again, we are going to be interviewing tonight uh, Himanshu, uh, the leader of the Warsong Battalion. And uh, so we've been looking forward to this for quite some time. And so without further ado, let us go and find out all we can about Himanshu. All right, folks, well, we have found him. Uh, Himanshu, premier of the Warsong Battalion. He's a warbringer, Himanshu of the Horde. He's a level 90 goblin death knight. Hello, sir. Hi, nice to meet you. It is very nice to meet you. And we really want to thank you for your time here tonight. Uh, we have really looked forward to speaking with you. Yeah, I was, you know, I've always wanted to meet Terwinkle oh, after but... I your uh, <laughs> video on Sorrow. Oh, great. <laughs> well, again, yeah, we, we've... Uh, I've really wanted to, the, the opportunity to speak with you because, again, you cannot talk about Emerald Dream without, uh, somewhere along the line, speaking about Himanshu. And so, uh, for me, it's just uh, a great uh, thrill to be able to have the chance to sit down with you tonight and talk with you all about uh, what it is you do in the game. Yeah, sounds fun. And so, the first question that we always ask is, how did you come up with the name Himanshu? Was that out of a book or, or a movie or something? Or um, I'm not a very creative person, so I just basically sat down. And it just uh, it just came to me. I don't know. All right. Well, <laughs> sometimes the best names, that's the way they, they come up, is, is just through, uh, you know, just a, either the random name generator or just something that uh, you come up with. I think uh, Turwinkle's disguised with Sluffy, or Turwinkle is, is along the same... same uh, same reasons, you know, I didn't really think about it, just something that, you know, came up and, <laughs> okay, and it just fits, and, and so uh, Himanshu definitely uh, has certainly taken on a meaning of its own in Emerald Dream, I would think, and, and people certainly know the name, so that's, that's great, it's, again, something that you basically just, it wasn't out of a movie or a book or anything, but just something you came up with, so that's, <laughs> that's great. Now, he wasn't always a goblin, was he? No, um, the first Manchu when I first actually made War Song the time was actually a druid. Um, and that was a troll druid. And I actually quit playing my druid when Mop hit. And I brought my DK over from my old realm. I name changed to Manchu to Himanshu of two U's, and then I renamed my DK Hermanchu. So and when I renamed my DK, I think he was a blood elf male. And Ever since then, I've gone through maybe about 20 to 25 race changes or gender changes. <laughs> well, I'm sure Blizzard's, Blizzard's happy with that. Uh, and so you're now down to the, the uh, Goblin Death Knight. Are you enjoying that class? Oh, Goblin Goblin is Goblin's great. I've always wanted to be a gnome. Like, it was one of my things when I first started playing this game. was, hey, you know, I really want to be a gnome mage or a gnome warlock. I always just wanted to be a gnome, you know, caster. Um, but... Yeah, I love Goblin. Like, the racials, I mean, the haste is nice to have, and the rocket jump has saved me several times. You know, when you get blown off your mount, or you get, you know, hit by a guard and destroy, and you're falling from the sky. Or if you're on the wall, world PvPing, I mean, it, it's really useful. Okay. <laughs> well, great. And uh, do you think you may race change come uh, the new expansion? Uh, it will probably be in the next two weeks, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, okay. And what are you, what are you going to go with, do you think? Uh, I've been recently you know, going undead or torn. I've never been a torn before. It's yeah, I could never take the whole, you know, just the whole torn look. But I think I might try it. A couple of guildies have dared me to do it. Okay. 
<laughs> well, it's always fun to do something new, I think, uh, especially towards this end of the expansion where things tend to get a little stale sometimes, and it's always fun to try something new and different. You know, that's one of the best things about World PvP, though, is that the expansion comes to an end, but people are getting bored. They aren't doing, you know, their raids, they're not doing their arenas. So you see, actually, see, you see more World PvP happening because people are bored and looking for things to do. Oh, okay. So you see an uptick then in, in the uh, World PvP. Yeah, definitely. Oh, excellent. And especially, folks, as you as you remember, uh, Emerald Dream is a World PvP server. And so uh, that is a way of life over here. And so, and a lot of fun. If you haven't had the opportunity to do so, uh, certainly come over, roll a tune on Emerald Dream, and uh, join in the fun. It is a, a, it's definitely keeps you on your toes when you're out there questing or or mining or whatever, uh, you always have to kind of look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, a simple gank could turn out to, uh, you know, 20v20 into like a 40-man raid going at each other pretty That's fast. <laughs> yeah, that certainly is, and, and especially for the RPers out there, you got to be careful where you're you're holding your events sometimes, because uh, it, can, it can turn ugly real quick. <laughs> yeah, guild rivalries are a very big part of our mode dream. You know, people will see us on guild tag and they'll just want to, you know, Go fight. <laughs> well, excellent. And so, folks, when we come back, we're actually going to talk with Manchu a little bit about that. So uh, we'll be right back with that. All right, and we are back, and Himanshu's gotten out some of his toys here, and uh, <laughs> we're, we're ready for the next uh, next part of uh, the questions. And, and I guess that's going to lead us to, when did you first start playing WoW? Um, I first started playing WoW back, like, first year of high school, which I think was, yeah, it was Wrath, middle Wrath, middle of Wrath, I think. Uh, one of my friends got me into it, and I've been playing ever since. Now, had you played any MMOs before that? No, uh, I mostly played uh, RTS, you know, strategy games all oh. the time. Oh, okay. And so, uh, so you got in, and so what was your first character? What did you roll up? Uh, it was a paladin. It was a human paladin. It's named Domilus. It's still on Death Rock. That was my first server. I only got him up to about level 55, and then I quit to make a DK. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So uh, when did you come to uh, Emerald Dream? Came to Emerald Dream back in 2011, around October, with one of my friends that I met on Sojeris. And we came over to ED to basically, you know, join some world PvP action because at that time, uh, Sargeras was kind of becoming very uh, alliance dominated. And you know, me and him always just basically ran around and we'd gank people. And you know, we started to get bored because there wasn't much action. So we decided to come over to our dream. At that point, I was alliance. Oh, okay. And so, when did you switch to Horde? I switched to Horde about two or three weeks after coming to. Emerald Dream, uh, primarily at the request of my friend who wanted to join crew, which is still around at that point. So we hopped over, but unfortunately, like, you know, around the time when we hopped over, you know, crew left to go to another server. And at that point, you know, after crew left, there's like a big gap, like a power hole in on the Horde side, because I don't know if you know this, but crew was like the backbone of Horde World PvP. Once they left, you know, the Alliance were always running into Orgrimmar. You'd see them, you know, f literally bringing 15 people into our city and taking down a leader and, you know, opposition because all the leadership had left and they they gone to kill Jaden. Oh, I see. And so, um, and so after, did you start Warsong Battalion at that point when crew left? Yeah. Yeah, I started WSB about two or three weeks after they left, basically because, hey, I wanted World PvP and... I just kind of got sick of it all, like, you know, logging in, not being able to do anything, knowing we would defend, and I was like, you know, let me just make a guild. You know, I never wanted to be one, like, I never wanted to be a GM, but um, it just seemed like the only option at the time, where you'd have a lot of guild startup, you know, because there's a power vacuum, but, you know, I joined them, I checked it out, and I didn't enjoy any of them, so I decided, you know what, let me try my hand at leading a guild, and so that's how WCB started. Sure, and I think a lot of people will agree with me saying that when Warsong Battalion left a little bit ago, uh, you saw that power vacuum again in uh, on Emerald Dream, and uh, and it it certainly seemed to switch back uh, t 
towards the alliance uh, in a big way. Uh, did you did you kind of see that uh, as well? Um, well, after I quit WoW and I disbanded the guild back in fall of last year, I um, you know, I check the forums every now and then, and I have people you know text me because you know I made some amazing friends. You know, we've met in real life. You know, they know my phone number. You know, they hit me up. Guildies, you know, that I know in real life now because they've come to visit, and you know, they tell me what was going on and stuff. You know, that hey, you know. Now that we're not around, this is what's happening, and this is how the server is. And you know, I'd read the forums every once in a while because you know the, the Emerald Dream forums. I, I think even if you're not playing the game, they're really entertaining. Yes, you could certainly say so. Uh, that is uh, one way to put it. Uh, Emerald Dream forums, I think, without a doubt, um, is the most active, and again, the most uh, diverse. Vicious. Yes, diverse. It can be a little harsh, uh, but it is certainly interesting, uh, the Emerald Dream Forums. In fact, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And so uh, we'll be right back with some talk on and about the Emerald Dream Forum. So we'll be right back with that. <coughs> All righty. So, folks, we're back and we're talking about Emerald Dream Forums. Now, again, if you have not had the opportunity to check out the Emerald Dream Forums, it is... Uh, in most respects, a very rough and tumble uh, forums, uh, you know, and Himanshu is, uh, some would say, uh, either fortunate or unfortunately, uh, the center of a lot of threads over on the Emerald Dream forums. People either love you or hate you, sir. Um, now, as far as the forums go, uh, what do you think, why do you think uh, Emerald Dream's forums are a little harsher than say, uh, Moon Guard or uh, Worm Rest Accord? Um, that's an interesting question. Back when I first started playing on the server, back in Cataclysm, I, a lot of the threads we had back then, you know, we had a lot of World PvP happen threads, but they were threads that spawned from in-game action and also led to in-game action. Like, you'd have a thread over maybe a battle, and you'd have both guilds call each other out, and, you know, they'd be pretty rude to each other. But there's also there's always a certain degree of respect, um, and people weren't so prone to making threads out of the blue. Like they wouldn't make threads over a small minor detail, or you know, I ganked you. Look at this. It would be like you know, significant battles that were had where a lot of people were participants, and you know, it'd be a threat. And a result of a lot of those threads was a lot of in-game PvP. Like back in Cataclysm, there's just one guild in the lines called Bloodless Lions. And we, you know, we used to engage them pretty much every night. Actually, every every couple of hours, we'd have a big brawl somewhere. It was crazy, actually. You know, every couple of hours, one of their members would gank one of our members. You know, we'd reinforce, or you know, we'd gank one of theirs, and they'd reinforce. And you'd you'd see a lot of rivalry because if you kill some of that guild tag, you know they'd come out. And if they kill one of ours, we they you know they knew that we'd come out. And a lot of that led to threats. But I think the difference between then and now is that those threads led to a lot of in-game PvP, and nowadays, it, it, I don't think it really does. Like you see all these hate threads, right? But there's not a lot of people are also complaining about a lack of world PvP. And I think that's important to note that a lot of these threads are just like a lot of the form PvP is just form PvP, and it's not translating to in-game PvP. Oh, so that is actually a very interesting, uh, interesting way to look at it. So. How do you, how do we change that? How does how do we go from it being just uh, forum PvP to more in-game action? Uh, well, well, one of the biggest things was back then the guilds were different. The leadership was different back on Alliance side. It was you had people like you had extremely charismatic people like Kinnick and Lion and Bruno used to play a lot back then too. And these people, you know, they were they were guild leaders. Who were not only a active, b willing to play, but also they were they had a certain degree of respect in terms of their members would they'd make sure their members wouldn't make stupid threats. Bottom line, you know, if one of their guildies made a threat, it would be a, it would be a you know a classy threat that would you know lead to you know PvP. It wasn't it wouldn't just be you know a silly call out thread where real life information is being thrown out. The, you know what I mean? And I think that's a big thing was that back then guilds were just the guilds are different. You know, people were willing to fight. And nowadays, it seems as if the guilds that we have in Alliance side are quick to lose morale or 
they make threats for no reason. It's you know the the, the type of player has changed. I think on a line side now. Oh okay, and so a lot of the PVP guilds on the alliance side. Do you think uh, just because? Well, how do, how would you put it uh, that they've been, I don't know, beaten so many times by Warsong Battalion that it's hard for a guild to maybe uh, maybe do the same thing you did, come up with a guild that's going to have players in it that can uh, band together to come against uh, Warsong Battalion. Well, a lot of the PVP World PVP guilds you have on the line side or currently are actually transfer guilds. You know, they came here from other servers, so you so know they're not they're not native homegrown. You know. Oh, okay, so maybe they just don't have the experience. Yeah, like, you know, they come here, you know, hey, you know, we came from this server and we did that here. You know, they, they, they brag about their old server achievements and stuff like that, but, I mean, yeah, you're on Emerald Dream now, you yeah. know. <laughs> Things are different here. Certainly, Emerald Dream is a different bear altogether. And so, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and uh, talk about world PvP here on Emerald Dream. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, Himachu, Emerald Dream is, as we have noted, a world PvP server. And so, in your opinion, uh, what does it take for a guild to do well on uh, either Horde or Alliance side, do well in the world PvP scene here on Emerald Dream? Well, I mean, you have two types of world PvP. There's, you know, your small-scale world PvP, and there's also your large-scale world PvP. The thing about ED is, it all eventually is going to lead to if a guild is involved, you know, if there's a certain amount of players involved, it's always going to lead to large scale. Because, you know, one side's going to, you know, take a loss, they'll bring more. And it's just a chain where the other side will bring more to counter. And it just goes, you know, it results in a large scale battle. Um, what it takes to succeed in that type of an environment is probably, you know, for one, you need, you need to actually have the willingness to fight. You know, a lot of people... They think WSB is just me. It's really not. And one of the best things about WSB is that we have this player base that's actually willing to world PvP all the time. Like, we have guys who, you know, who log on to world PvP and this is their passion. They like doing it and they're always willing to do it. And they're also the guys that take, you know, guild pride pretty seriously in terms of if one of the guildies gets ganked by a group. They'll go out and reinforce that guild. They know it'll lead to world PvP. There are also guys who, you know, if it's even if it's late at night, you know, they will jump to a city defense. So, bottom line, one of the most important things you need is that willingness. And then comes the coordination. Then comes skill. Then comes you know voice comms, recruits. You just need that. You just need that core thing, which is willingness. You know, the desire to world PvP. Sure. Now, what do you enjoy more? Do you enjoy more the planned? World PvP, where you talk to another, say, an alliance guild saying we're going to meet here at such and such a time with 20 people versus 20, or uh, the more spontaneous, uh, spontaneous, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> the more yeah. more just, uh, random. just random, random, right, random yeah. PvP, yeah. <laughs> um, see, back in Cata, I love random PvP because it always led to larger engagements that used to last forever. That, that's because, I already, as I already discussed, you know, the guilds are different back then. People were more willing to, you know, take up the cause of their guild. That's different now. I can give you... I can show you a video of WSB going to storm with 15 people and RP walking out after killing the king. And see, that spontaneous world PvP, it's hard to find nowadays, in my opinion. Especially when you have the WSB guild tag, you know. So, and, so in a way, do you think that uh, your reputation has hurt uh, World PvP for Warsong Battalion? Definitely. People are, you know... I mean, they'll say they don't want to engage because we'll bring a lot of people, but I mean, time and time again, we've proven that if there's a certain amount of alliance there, we'll, we'll bring equal numbers. And we do that. We, if there's an alliance attack one of our cities, we'll log over, we'll check the numbers, and we'll bring equivalent amount. Um... But, you know, it's just a general unwillingness to world PvP, unless it's arranged nowadays. Which is why I'm liking arranged world PvP more in MOP, is that, you know, at least that way I'll get a fight, right? You know? Sure. Like, log over, talk to someone, get a 20v20 going, and that's fun. Now, in your opinion, what is your favorite alliance guild to uh, world PvP against right now? Hmm, it's, uh, uh, definitely CBH. 
No, they're first of all they're all dwarfs. I mean, <laughs> just... <laughs> and second of all, CBH yeah, they don't brag when they win, and they don't whine when they lose. And that's honestly something that you can't find in any of the guild alliance currently. Is that a guild that won't run to the forums the second they win, and it's also a guild, you know a guild or a guild that won't cry the second they win they lose. Another thing about CBH is you know you'll wipe them two or three times in a row, but they'll keep going. You know they've got that desire. You know they want to world PvP, and they'll do it even if they lose. Like they'll have fun losing, from what I've seen. Sure, and we've definitely looked forward to uh, eventually being able to sit down with Clan, and for you folks who don't know, CBH is Clan Battlehammer, and uh, have the chance to sit down with those fine folks and and uh, and talk about their wonderful guild. So, excellent. Well, that's great. And so, uh, are you able to uh, get together with them on a on a uh, consistent basis? Well, there's a lot of time differences with them. They play later usually than we do, but we've had we've had some pretty great events with them, like you know pre you know AVs with them, like war game AVs. And we've had we've actually had a battle right here in the Battle Scholar once. And we've had a lot of events with them where we've planned our numbers and we've brought you know the same size force and we've gone at it. All righty, well, excellent. And so, folks, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, Himanchu and his own uh, favorites in in WoW. So we'll be right back with that. All right, folks, and we are back. And so, Himanchu, what do you like to do in the game? I, I honestly, one of the best parts of the game is that it's it's a game where you get to interact with a lot of people, and that's what I like doing. Is I like to do things with other people. You know, whether it's just sitting in Teamspeak talking to guildies, or if it's you know even doing PVE with the right with the right people is fun. You know, decent conversation and playing the game. Certainly. Just, now, do you do any rating at all, or? Uh, no, I don't have. I have. I don't have the attention required to. <laughs> to I used to raid back in Wrath, but um, I I really liked ICC. It was a fun raid, but not anymore. Uh, do you do any of the uh, raided battlegrounds or battlegrounds yeah. that sort of thing? RBGs are pretty active in WC. Like we've got one team around 2K right now, and you know we've got the miscellaneous teams. Oh well, excellent. Uh, 2K is really well. That's that's doing pretty good, from what I imagine. I, I'm not much of a <laughs> a battleground guy. I can do maybe three, and then I get so frustrated I gotta I gotta stop, <laughs> or or my blood pressure goes through the roof. So uh, you know, uh, why are you all fighting in the road? Get to the flag. And that sort of thing. So, uh, but from what I've heard, 2K is pretty good. Well, I mean, battlegrounds are fun if you have, you know, if you got that, if you got a nice group, you know, nice group of friends that will play. Otherwise, you know, they're the most frustrating thing ever, in my opinion. If you're just <laughs> with a random group. Now, uh, you also do a little bit of RP. Is that correct? Yeah, I do a little bit of RP. I've never really had a stable backstory just because I race changed so many of the times. Like I've I race change a lot. Every two or three weeks I race change. And, so it's hard. And why why do you why do you race change so much? What what drives you to do that? I, I don't know. I just get bored and I want to look at it, something else other than like Goblin or Nork, whatever I'm currently playing. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know? now, sir, a lot of folks would say that that's what alts are for. Uh, do you have uh, any alts? Do you play any other alts? I'm actually playing a mage right now. You know, I've been having fun with it. But the, one of the things about me and alts is. DKs are hands down probably the best class to lead world PvP on. So whoa, they, sir, whoa, whoa, whoa! Now Turwinkle would argue that mages are are, are I mean, as premier. A, as, a, <laughs> as a DK, you have grips, you have nice survivability, you're a melee class, meaning you can lead the charge, and you also have great AOE damage. I mean, the grips are why I love my DK. It's, you know, you better way a set of kills. Okay. So, Bottom line is, even if I ever do level one all, I generally end up playing my DK all the time, just because you know, I'm always doing world PvP. I'm always defending a city, or I'm attacking one, you know? <laughs> all right. And so, uh, you do a little... So you would consider your RP to be light RP, is that correct? Yeah, walk into an inn sometime, and oh. RP, and that's about it. Not actually have a character storyline. Honestly, one of the things about being me is that it's actually hard to find RP. A lot of the RP that I go to, I often get shunned. Because, you know, I have a certain reputation. 
Oh, okay, certainly. And I guess that brings us to that next question. Uh, you know, as far as I know with Terwinkle, uh, you know, people know him from the series, and, and so I get a lot of positive uh, feedback from folks, and, and I certainly enjoy it. Whereas Himachu, I, I imagine you, you get some positive, but uh, do you, you find that you're a target a lot of the time out in the world? Out in the world? Um, I've, there's two types of people that I've met out in the world. There's one. There's the first one who will always attack me just to get the, you know, him at you kill, to throw on the forums. Or there's also the people that will literally just see me and walk away because <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't want to, you know, get involved in anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certainly. So uh, I guess that, do you find that sometimes you wish you could uh, change your uh, name tag? I used to, when I first brought my DK here, I used to PvP on him a lot, and I'd always, I'd change his name like every two weeks because it was nice not being targeted in world PvP. Like in group PvP, it, it was nice. It was nice not being hounded all the time. You know, it was nice to just go out in the world, be able to play the game for what it is. It's a game. And not be, you know, not have a target on your back or not be watched. Not be watched. That's a big one, you know? Certainly. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am constantly myself, always getting hugged or petted, and and uh, and again, it's it's always a positive thing for me. But I can't imagine, you know, just trying to just enjoy the game and, and constantly getting harassed. Uh, that that would be a little bothersome, I think. Yeah, one of my best, mo like one of my favorite moments in WoW have been after this man WCB, I actually went alliance for a time period. And I was playing a hunter that no one knew who I was, and I had the most fun I've ever had. Just running around, ganking by myself on the aisle, not having to worry about, you know, losing a fight and, you know, people, you, you know what I mean? Just not being watched or harassed or bothered. It was, it was, it was a good feeling. Certainly. Now, um, I guess that brings us to my next question. Uh, you know, a lot of times we'll ask people what they like to do in real life because uh, for a lot of people looking at WoW or gamers or uh, our peers, uh, there's a certain a stereotype that goes along with that. And that's, you know, you, you're 40 years old, live in mom and dad's basement, uh, you don't have a job, uh, you have no other interests other than, uh, you know, the gaming, you know, the WoW. And but, you know, through the interviews and stuff, I, I've really been able to break, I think, that stereotype uh, for folks that watch the show. And so with that being said, what do you like to do uh, in real life other than WoW? Well, in real life, um, first of all, like I'm, I'm like a big fan of animals. I'm vegetarian. I, I used to volunteer in an animal shelter. Nowadays, I don't have time in between summer school and WoW to, to do that anymore. But I used to spend a lot of time at an animal shelter. And I also used to um, work at a veterinarian's office where I'd help with things. You know, I just really like animals. You know, I have a pet dog. And, you know, other than that, you know, I, you know, go to school. I'm majoring in political science with the intent of going to law school afterwards. Oh, well, great. So I'm sure that takes a, quite a bit of time as well. Yeah, I'm a very busy guy. You know, it's not... <laughs> If it's not wow, it's, you know, school. If it's not that, you know. Well, great. So that is wonderful. So, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk uh, to Himanshu about some advice that he has for new players or new guilds coming on to the Emerald Dream server. So we'll be right back with that. All right, and we are back. And so, Himanshu, uh, advice, what advice would you have for... Uh, a new player coming to Emerald Dream or a, a new guild that's transferring to Emerald Dream, what advice would you have for those folks? For both, I'd say don't be a jerk on the forums. <laughs> What's <laughs> going to happen is, I mean, there's been a lot of people that have transferred to the server with, you know, they talk down on the server or they talk trash and they end up getting ganked off the server. That's also, I mean, one of my personal pet peeves with the guild coming to the server is when they, you know, bring up their old server and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we had better things there or we had better world PvP there or things like that, you know? That bothers me because if you're on ED, you got to realize this is the best server on WoW and there's no other server like it, <laughs> you know? Uh, well, I guess that brings up what what do you think separates Emerald Dream for other, from other world PvP servers? What makes it better? Um, nowadays, it's, it's not very 
So you really don't see much of a difference nowadays. But back in Kato, one of the things I used to notice was a lot of our world PvP used to come into being because of RP. For example, the AC, which was an alliance of alliance guilds, was based on RP. Um, we'd often, back in Kato, you know, we always didn't have to go to a city. We could attack an RP base out of the world, and we'd know that that RP kill would defend. And it, it led to a lot. Of, it led to a lot of diversity, is what it really led to. And I guess again, how would you? How do we bring that back to Emerald Dream? Uh, honestly, the two months I've been back, um, one of the things we should start doing is probably advertising the server as a world PvP server. Because I mean, if so it, what it really sometimes what it does is it brings people that aren't actually willing to, let alone affect RP or give it a chance, like give RP a chance. Like that's fine if you don't want RP, but respect RP, you know, or not have obnoxious names like YOLO DK Cutie. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Freedom. Because <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for just world PvP, or if you're looking for that kind of server, because I mean, those players are often toxic. You know, they have these egos. They're they're ones that will talk trash. They're the ones who bring up. They're the ones who have turned their forms into the cesspool it is now. To be honest, um, you know, there's other servers for them. Bleeding Hollow. I think Dark Sphere is a pretty active world PvP scene nowadays. Uh, Kill Jaden. And there's other servers, you know. Well, it's also worth mentioning that a lot of the servers have actually more world PvP than EAD does. You know? Certainly. And from uh, what we have seen, Turwinkle and I, uh, we have seen kind of an uptick in RP on uh, Emerald Dream. And so hopefully uh, we'll see that uh, equate into more of the uh, Emerald Dream that uh, you had when you first started. So hopefully that uh, turns out to... Uh, be exactly that. So, uh, you know, I know for myself and Termwinkle, we'd certainly try to bring a, I don't, I don't want to say a, a lighter side, but maybe a better side uh, to the forums when we're uh, talking there. And, uh, you know, so hopefully uh, we get more folks uh, behind us that are, are doing exactly that and having fun RPing and hopefully equating to that that good kind of world PvP and uh, where, again, folks are enjoying the game and not turning it into, as you said, a cesspool. So, well, excellent advice. I, I think, um, you know, that is uh, certainly a, a better way of looking and hopefully at a brighter future for Emerald Dream is, again, yeah. uh, uh, doing exactly exactly that. So, excellent. So, folks, yeah, well, oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah. One of the most important things, I think, is just to remember that ED has this great, rich history, you know, and to acknowledge that and to remember the people that made the server what it is and what actually made, you know, what actually made it the world VP paradise. You know what I mean? Oh, certainly. Certainly. And so, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk with Himanshu uh, a little bit more about his time here on Emerald Dream and uh, see if we might have missed anything uh, during the interview. So we'll be right back with that. All right, and we're back. And so, Himachu, let us talk about uh, your leadership role in uh, Warsong Battalion. And again, a lot of people say that Warsong Battalion is uh, basically just uh, Himachu, uh, uh magnified, basically. You know, it is basically Himanshu <laughs> and, uh, you know, the guild is as big as his ego. Uh, what do you say about that? I don't think that's true. I mean, like I said before, like we have, it's the members that make the guild and that's the lesson to be learned by a lot of GMs, I think. I mean, if your guildies are behind you and if you don't have that type of popular support from your own guild, you can't really accomplish much. I mean, it may not seem like a lot, but when you're out there and you're getting wiped by a really large group and people are, you know, becoming demoralized because of it, you want you want that you want that relationship between you and your guild to where they know that they're not only fighting for you, but they're fighting for themselves and for the guild. And that'll make them stick to it and it'll make them stay around, you know, even if they are getting wiped. And it'll make them, you know, get back up and go for another try. Um, that also goes for when we're preparing for defense. We get prior knowledge of a lot of alliance attacks, and what it often leads to is us just sitting around waiting for them to come. 
because they find out that we know they're coming and they take their time coming because they're trying to get more people to counter it. And, you know, what you have is an hour long wait. And if people have that type of like agency within the guild where they feel like they're a part of something, not only just the GM, I think that's in their stick around for that hour and then they're still ready to defend. I think that's that's what makes LBC what it is, is that we have that willingness and that dedication from our own members, not just the leadership. Well, certainly, the, although there there has to be a lot to be said, and I say this in every guild interview, that a guild is only as good as its leader. And so uh, how do you think you became as good a guild leader as you have been uh, uh, with Warsong Battalion? I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I promoted <laughs> the wrong people. I said the wrong things. I did a lot of, I made a lot of mistakes. Well, I mean, I used to have a really bad temper, and I kind of still do. I mean, I'm prone to raging sometimes. Uh, I've learned not to do that anymore. But or I, less is or, is or is it just less? <laughs> just less. Just less. Okay. Because <laughs> even Turwinkle can rage from time to time, uh, you know. So <laughs> we're we're all human, sir. Yes. One of the one of the most important things I bear in mind when I'm leading the guild, like a, you know, daily activities and defense stuff like that, is that. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of guilds in Emerald Dream have a type of policy. It would be in both Horde and Alliance guilds, where they have this thing called a CTA, which is basically drop what you're doing unless it's, you know, an RBG or, you know, a heroic raid or something, and come out and help the guild out in world PvP. And if you don't, you, you get G kicked. Like you you actually get removed from the guild. And I'm extremely opposed to that. Because, you know, people are paying this you know, people are paying fifteen bucks a month to have fun. And you can't tell them what to do. You can't, like, unless you're part of your event, I don't think you have the right to tell your guildies what to do. Unless you're representing the guild in a negative way, breaking the rules, or, you know, they're part of your event and they're not doing something right. Like, if they're not having fun, okay, they can leave and go do something else that they want to do. I mean, your job as a GM, like, I think my job as a GM is to facilitate entertainment. Like, provide entertainment for the guild, facilitate fun, um, you know, I always ask my guildies, like, hey, are you guys having fun? Is this fun for you guys? Like, you know, because what, what, what may be fun for me may not be fun for the majority of the guild. So it's always good to bear that in mind. Like, are your guildies having fun? All right, well, that, that is. That, that, yeah, that's going to lead to higher participation, higher numbers, people willing, you know, just a more positive environment. Well, I think that's an excellent, excellent uh, piece of advice for guild leaders out there. And uh, and hopefully, folks, will be able to have the chance to sit down with Warsong Battalion in the future. And, and we can learn more about uh, what those guild rules are and how you can uh, join uh, the Warsong Battalion and become part of that and what to expect once you're in the Warsong Battalion and, and what the kind of events they do and, and that sort of thing. So wonderful. And so, folks, uh, when we come back, we are going to allow Himanshu to kind of take the floor there and to add anything that we again might have missed during the interview and uh, possibly learn something that you folks you folks you <laughs> you folks might not know about him at you so we'll be right back with that all righty folks and we're back and so him you now that we're kind of coming to the end here um, you know from what I've seen and from listening to you and, and having the chance to sit down and talk with you, I see a lot of that stuff that people have said about not only you, but about the Guild as well. And uh, again, the interview wasn't supposed to be more about Warsong, but more about you. Um, but a lot of that stuff kind of falls to the wayside, doesn't it? I, I think, again, a lot of times your, your persona is really magnified either in a positive or a negative way in the forums. And uh, so I, I guess how would you... Uh, what would you say to those folks that are watching the the interview now? You should really give uh, you should really get to know people for yourself. You know, because like the opinions of others, they're often influenced by things that happen in game. Like in terms of them losing or maybe one of their friends being ganked. You no, know, a lot of that hate is isn't even you know. There's no real reason to it, other than they're mad about something. A lot of the you know things people say are often not true. I think mean, that's, that's important to remember. And as for WSB, like, you know, people, a, lot of, a lot of people say we don't have a strong community, but I mean, the thing about WSB is you get what you put into it. Like, if you put into a community and you make the effort to, you know, jump on TeamSpeak, engage on our forums, or, you know, talk on the Facebook page that we have, you will love it because we really do have a strong community. 
Oh, great. And again, folks, we're going to hopefully uh, set up a time where we're going to sit down and talk with the uh, Warsong Battalion, and we'll allow you the opportunity to see uh, some of these fine folks that are with uh, Himanshu in Warsong Battalion and are helping that to make that probably, I would almost say, the premier Horde side guild over on Emerald Dream. It's certainly the one that's talked about the most, and I, in some cases, the one that's feared the most. And I think, uh, sir, it's only because you guys are doing such a good job there and, and uh, really, like you said, are, are able to uh, uh, get to your guild in such a fashion where you're able to coordinate so well. And, uh, and again, hopefully, uh, you folks will will be able to find that alliance side uh, challenge and uh, continue those fun uh, world PvP events down the line. Yeah, I really hope we do. I mean, it all boils down to the guilds on the alliance and the leadership on the alliance, which currently isn't there. I mean, I hope that changes. But. Well, you never know. With the expansion uh, coming up, we'll see, definitely see an uptick in uh, activity. And again, this you know, coming towards the end of this expansion, which has been a really a long one, MOP has been uh, going on for quite a bit. And you know, with all the new MMOs and the those uh, flash in the pan stuff all around us, you know, you see, uh, of course, people out trying the latest and the greatest. But yeah, we all know that when the expansion comes out, we'll certainly see a lot more folks returning or trying WoW for the first time. So uh, hopefully, uh, as you said, we'll see the the Alliance side pick up here on Emerald Dream and uh, give you folks a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, if it does pick up, I hope it's a you know, homegrown effort other than some other guild coming in from another server. I mean, that would probably be worse than anything. <laughs> I'd really well, just like to keep ED, ED in terms of guilds. Well, do you find that that's uh, a little harder with the cross realm? Um, well, the, the realms that we're merged with aren't very, from what I've seen, active. So, I, not really, no. Oh, okay. Well, that's excellent then. Well, so there we go, folks. Uh, when we come back, we're going to give some final thoughts to uh, Himanshu. And uh, we'll give, us our, give him our thanks. And we will say goodbye. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks. And we are back. And so, Himanshu, uh, any final thoughts before we leave tonight? Um, yeah, I'd just like to remind people that, you know, if you're coming to Emerald Dream, you should be prepared to fight, and you should also, I, I brought it up before, is that you should really remember that the server has history, and it's a history that, that's worth, you know, learning about and respecting. All right, well, excellent. And, I, again, I think uh, Himachu has said it, as he just said several times here. Yeah, Emerald Dream certainly is a different uh, world in itself, a different server, especially if you're not used to uh, world PvP. This is definitely a lot harder realm to uh, do things in, but I think in, in the same retrospect, it's a lot more fun in some ways. Uh, again, you're always constantly on the lookout because no matter where you are, uh, you could be attacked is so that makes it certainly a lot more fun. There's a lot of tension and uh, And so for those RPers out there, uh, you know, you're not always safe <laughs> RP and out in the world. Yeah, sometimes. That actually, oh, go that ahead. Actually, that actually adds flavor to the RP, doesn't it? I mean, you're always under a threat like it's actually like if you're at war Certainly. Yeah, uh, you know, we've brought that up several times in, in guild interviews that you know uh, again you, you you're not always safe doing your RP events, and it certainly adds uh, a bit of, like I said, tension and a little bit more excitement to uh, the event because it's almost like real life. Uh, you know, someone could come up and attack you, and that's what World of Warcraft is about, is the Horde versus the Alliance. And it, 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 in some retrospects, over the years, we've kind of lost sight of that. But I think servers like Emerald Dream uh, especially Emerald Dream, uh, bring that to life fully that there's a war between Horde and Alliance. And I, I certainly think that's the way it should be. And so, uh, again, sometimes you're not even safe in your home city. So uh, definitely makes it a lot more fun. But 
We really want to thank you tonight, uh, Humanchu, for taking the time to sit down with us and, again, share with not only Terwinkle and I, but with the rest of the folks out there, a little bit about you and a little bit about your play style and uh, who you are in the game. And I think it goes a long ways to show that, again, sometimes people's opinions of others is just that. It's an opinion and it's not true facts. So thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity. You bet. And so with that, folks, we are going to uh, hurt Torwinkle safely back to Chillwind Camp to where he can give his final thoughts on this wonderful interview with Himanshu, uh, the premier of the Warsong Battalion. So we'll see you folks back at Chillwind. Now, alrighty, folks. Well, we made it safe and sound back to Chillwind Camp. And boy, Torwinkle, wasn't that a lot of fun? Sure. And we certainly want to give Himachu a nice big thank you for taking the time tonight to speak with us about all about his character, his play style, and what he is doing over on Emerald Dream. Allow me to express my deepest thanks. Certainly. And so folks, if you like this episode, click that like button. If you'd like to comment on this episode or on any of our previous episodes, please do so below. Let us know what you liked and let us know what you didn't. And finally, if you'd like to subscribe, well, we would love to have you, so hit that subscription button today. Well, excellent job, Terwinkle. Questions right on point, as always, sir. And Terwinkle, we will see you next time. Farewell. Farewell, Terwinkle. Farewell. <laughs>